Hello, so I'm going to take one of the extended questions, question 8, um, about a flight booking app, and you'll recognise the picture when you see it, because we've done this question before in class. So, in this flight booking app, users are, reckon- are asked to enter their departure airport, destination airport, departure date, return date, number of adults, number of children. A message will be displayed showing the total flight cost and duration of the trip, state two processes. Um, now... If I go through this and look at it, the users are asked to enter. So these are all these are all inputs. So they're not going to be relevant to the question, or at least for this part A. The message will be displayed showing the total flight cost and the duration of the trip. So those are two things that we're having to work out. Now they're going to be displayed, so that's an output. So the process is we're going to have to work these out. So we're going to calculate the total flight cost. So calculate total flight cost. Remember that my processes are going to be a verb or a doing word. It's doing something. It's not just displaying it. So you can't just write total flight cost because that may be an output. You've got to say, oh, it's calculating it. Um, calculate or find the duration. Then we've got part B, we've got a design. Um, it's a bit like the sort of design that you would get in an assignment where we've got the main algorithm here and then step 2 is refined separately into 2.1 and 2.2. The app provides an option to add bags to the booking. Each passenger is asked if they want to add a bag. The cost is an additional £7 for each passenger who decides to take a bag using a design technique of your choice. Refine step 4. Now, it's five marks. It's quite a big box and I think it probably makes it look a bit intimidating. It's really not. What we need to do is say each passenger. So it's not asking how many bags do you want in total. It's going to go one passenger at a time so we're going to loop in here so we're going to loop for each passenger I'm going to ask if they want a bag so inside my loop I'm going to have an if statement like if they want a bag and then an additional seven pounds for each passenger who decides to take it and if I just go back page a minute we've got an initial cost and then we're updating the cost so I've already got a cost variable and I'm just going to add 7 to it every time somebody wants a bag. So using a design technique we'll refine this step. So if I loop for each passenger and then we need to ask the passenger do you want a bag? So ask if each passenger wants a bag if they do want the bag so if bag equals yes or I might have thought it's true or whatever but this is just a design technique so I'm not too worried about syntax so if they do want the bag then add £7 to the total and, I mean, really this is the end of my if statement. And this is the end of my loop. But if your indentation is clear enough, then that's going to be fine. So, loop for each passenger. Each time you've got a passenger, so say there's five passengers, this is going to loop five times. Ask them do they want a bag. If they say yes, add seven pounds to the total. So I've covered all of the things in this that I needed to do. Because I've looped for each passenger, I've asked... If they did want the bag, then I've added the seven pounds. So this is possibly the graphic that you'll remember. Passengers are allocated an available an available seat. The data structure named seats. I'm gonna circle that because we're gonna come back to that. Is used to store whether it's available. And available is true and unavailable is false. That's really important later. 
So it gives us a graphic, right? There are 60 seats. Probably quite relevant here. And we can see some of them are already taken. So some are already unavailable. Most of them are available. State the most suitable data structure and data type to store seat availability. So I've got more than one seat. Right, I've got 60 seats, so that's going to be an array. It's not just one variable. And my data type. Well, it's available true and unavailable false. So it's going to be a billion. And we had a similar prelim question, and when we did this, most people got the first part, but then they forgot about true and false when they got to this question here. So we've got a pseudocode design showing how an available seat is allocated. And then using a programming language, so using Python, we're going to write code that's required to implement this design. So we're just taking this a line at a time, turning it into Python. A bit like you would have done during your assignment or in practice assignments, when you've seen assignments that are given as a lot of pseudocode and you're just going through it line by line and turning that into a code. Or a line of code, I should say. So, generating a random seat number, then we're going to loop. We're going to generate another random seat number at end the loop, set it to unavailable. Now, if I go through this, first of all, generate a random seat number. Well, what do I know about seat numbers? It goes up to 60, so it's going to be 1 to 60. Or really, if I'm doing this with an array in Python, it should be 0 to 59. But the point is, I've got 60 of them. Loop while, so this is going to be a while loop, it's not an if. While the generated seat is unavailable. This seemed to be the bit that threw people. Unavailable, well, we know that unavailable is false, because that's on the previous page. So while the seat is false, generate another random seat number, that's just the same as line 1, so that's going to be a random number, 0 to 59, and then after the loop, change the seat to unavailable. And again, we know unavailable is false. So let's turn this into some Python code. Generating a random seat number. So if I said, I'm like, seat, seat no for seat number equals random dot randint 0 to 59 so I've generated my random number now I've got my while loop so while the availability is false my array here is not called available right? if I look back earlier in the question I've got this data structure called seats and we know then from part part one that it's an array so while seats square bracket for an array and instead of saying item one or item two or whatever from the array I'm saying seats seat no so while the seat at that number that number of seat is unavailable so while that's false Then we're generating another random number, so inside my loop. And then ending the loop, well I don't really need to do anything for that with Python, we don't have a, an end loop construct. Change the seat to unavailable. So Again, I've got this array seats, and it's this particular number of seat, so that seat number, and we're setting that to unavailable, so that is being set to false. So really what's happening here is, the seats are all starting out as true, you're generating a random number, you keep looping while the seats that you're finding are false until you find one that's true that's available and then you store that so you say right seats seat number so that particular seat say seat 40 was available that's now taken that's false and then part three and it's interesting it's two marks because again we did a similar 
poem question. Some of you got the right idea, but you just didn't really spell it all out. Explain why the design becomes less efficient as more passengers are allocated seats. Well, if I look back here. This is shown as our available or our unavailable seats. If more of these boxes start to be coloured in, then imagine you're just picking one at random, right, putting your pen on the page somewhere, and you go, oh, that one's already taken. If more of them have been taken, then every time you choose a random number, chances are that one's already going to be taken. So the way I'm going to sort of write my answer for it is that there's more seats allocated That means that there are fewer seats or seat numbers available. Meaning you're going to have to look more times. And it's more and more and more times to find one that's free. So I'm just making sure that I'm really kind of explaining my answer there because it's an explain question. I'm spelling out my thinking. I'm not just giving the briefest answer that I can get away with. Um, now that's going to do me for question 8 because I've already done the systems bit and then I'll do question 9 and question 10 separately.